Hi everyone, this is Dan Dix reporting for Press for Truth and I have some groundbreaking information today in regards to the Boston Marathon bombing suspects. Um, I just needed to shoot this video right now to get this on the record uh, right now because this just happened to me within the last hour. So I want to get this on the record while it's still fresh in my mind. And I just had a lengthy half hour long at least conversation with the aunt of the two Boston Marathon bombing suspects who told me some very, very, very revealing information. A huge piece of the puzzle in this case. Now, let me, let me just take you back to the beginning. Um, this morning, I contacted, uh, Merritt is her name, uh, the aunt of the two suspects, and asked to arrange an interview. I um, got her on the phone and told her my name is Dan Dix, I'm from uh, Press for Truth independent media outlet and we would like to interview you and, and, and speak with you. And uh, first thing she said is where, where are you? And I said we're located in Toronto um, so we can come to we can come to where you are if you'd like. You don't have to go anywhere. We can come right to you uh, to do this interview and she started crying Right there on the phone, she broke down into tears and just said, uh, you know, uh, are you coming to kill me? Are they coming to kill me? You might kill me. They, they told me not to talk to media. I don't know why they're telling me not to speak with media. And she was very distraught. And, and I tried to calm her down and just, just say, um, you know, we're, we just want you to tell your, whatever you have to say, um, whatever it is you want to get out there, the information to the public. We're, we're, in, uh, we're not like your, your other reporters. I, I saw you on the news, the mainstream media did not represent you properly and we want you to have your uh, voice heard. And she, um, she, she then said, you know, okay, come, 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 I have things I need to show you. I have things I have to show you. So, you know, we said, okay, we're, we're on our way, um, and uh, we'll be there shortly. So, we packed up, we got all our gear, um, we went to her apartment. I was standing in the lobby area, um, and I called her again uh, to get buzzed in, and uh, she answered the phone, I said, okay, uh, we're, we're here, um, we're ready to come up to uh, speak with you, and again, right away, she said, uh, you know, who, who are you, you know, like, you want to come inside my apartment? And we said, you know, we, we, I just spoke with you, you know, about an hour ago and we arranged uh, an interview. I'm with Press for Truth, my name is Dan Dix, uh, and, and we're here to speak with you. And she started saying again, how do I know, you know, you're not here to kill me? How do I know who you, who you really are? And 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 I I didn't really know how else to just convince her that we're we're here to let you tell the world whatever it is you want to say and that's when she all of a sudden just went right into some of the things that she did indeed want to say and this is the important part she told me right then and there she said I saw video as she's very distraught and crying says I saw video of my oldest nephew Tamaran naked being placed in that cop car I am telling you 100% that was him. 100%, 100% that was him, that was him, that was him. I know him, I am identifying him to you. Right now, I am telling you that was him. And then she said, the, me the media is saying that y he was killed in a shootout with the police and that his younger brother hijacked a car and, and uh, ran him over and she said that that can't be because I've seen him that is him that is him why did they not come to me to identify to identify him I know my blood that is him that is him 100% and I said Merritt d d tell it, it, tell me that again exactly what you just told me is what you can tell me I'm down I'm downstairs right now I, I'm ready to come up and you can tell the world um, because she said, yes, you know, nothing, these dolls make sense, the whole, the media believes, uh, the whole world believes that my nephews did this because the media is telling them this and that, I'm telling you, that was not, uh, that, that, that was him, 100% guaranteed. And I said, we, we have to, we, you know, we, we got to get this information out there. And she again said, well, I don't, I, I, I don't know who you are, I, I'm afraid, she said, basically. She said, I don't even know what you look like. And I said, well, you can... 
look me up. I said it's pressfortruth.ca. Um, my picture is on the home page right there. And right away, she's pressfortruth.ca. She's typing it in. She had her computer right in front of her. Um, so I can hear that she's checking out the website. So she pulls it up. And she says, oh, I, I don't see your picture here. I said, well, just wait. You know, it, they're scrolling by and you'll see me there. And then I pop up and she says, oh, yes, okay, you're holding the camera. And I said, yeah, that's me. That's me there with the beard holding the camera and the microphone. And, yeah, that's me. I'm downstairs ready to, to come up and interview you now. And, and she cut me off right then and there and said, uh, computer just crashed. I have virus. I have virus. Screen went blank. I think they're watching. I think they're watching. Started crying again. And, um... So at this point, obviously, uh, she's trying to ascertain what my agenda is. She was very, very um, concerned that I was there to cause her harm. And she pretty much had to just uh, say, you know, I, I, I can't, I, I, I can't, I can't trust, I, I don't know. I, I just can't trust who you are, you said you are. And I said, I said, the world needs to hear what you just told me. And she said, will you tell them? I just told you. She said, you get that video, you post it on your website, and you tell the world that I said that was him. I'm identifying 100%. And I said, well, they're not, they're, they're not going to believe me if I tell them that you told me this. They're, they're, people will say, how do we know that she told you this? And she says, well, how do I believe that you're not here to kill me or, or to cause me some, some sort of harm? And so... Basically, um, you know, she just said these 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 questions don't add up and uh, things don't make sense and they were set up. And I said, yes, I know. Their, their mother said they were set up. Their father said they were set up. You are saying they were set up. There's a lot of questions that do not add up and don't make sense. She, and she said, questions, questions, what questions? And I said, well, you know, I've been following this as well. And I want to know about those federal agents or, or the security uh, firm who was there in their khaki pants, khaki boots, you know, black coats and backpacks, and she said, yes, yes, I know. I, I know who you're talking about, those guys. I've seen those uh, pictures and videos. I know, yes. And I said, yeah, exactly, right? Like, who were those guys? And she said, why you ask me? Why Why are you asking me? And I and I tried to say, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not asking you. I'm just trying to let you know where I'm coming from, that I've come across similar information. And, you know, the fact that uh, their mother said that they have been in contact with the FBI for the last three to five years and Again, she just reiterated that said look you tell the people That the naked man was him Why did they not ask me to identify? She said why why are they not you know asking me to to identify this? This is my blood I know in deep down. This is him. I know it. I know it. I know it 100% you tell the people and again, I just, I just tried to do my best, and obviously, you know, she's probably doing the right thing by not letting us in. I mean, technically, we're, I don't know her. We are strangers showing up at her apartment, and I just didn't know how else to convince her that we're, we're not here to cause you harm. We're here to uh, let you tell the, your story to the world, and this information that you just told me is important, and people need to hear it. And... Um, she, she basically just said, I, I, in no, no disrespect to you and your team, um, but I have to hang up and, um, you know, I, I'm sorry. And, I mean, this manhunt just happened two days ago, so she probably hasn't even slept. She probably hasn't eaten a lot. She's, she's um, not in a very good place right now. So, you know, she originally agreed to the sit-down one-on-one video interview with me, but again, when we got to her apartment and... Um, she was trying to figure out, you know, if we were there to cause her harm or not. Um, but she did say, this is what I have to tell the world. The man in the footage was my nephew, the oldest one. I'm telling you, 100%. And folks, the bottom line is, that would suggest, as she said, that... In that case, he couldn't have been killed in a shootout and driven over uh, by a car by, by his nephew because she saw him being placed into custody in the back of a police cruiser, stripped naked. They stripped him naked to see, uh, the report says, to, to see if, uh, make sure there was no explosives. And folks, 
the bottom line is the FBI does have a history of having their hands in these kinds of events. I mean, it's no secret anymore. It's been declassified that in the 1993 World Trade Center bombings, the FBI was all over that. And so now we're finding out that well, one of the suspects is obviously dead. Now we're hearing that one of them was shot in the throat and not able to speak. Which, if you are setting up a couple of patsies, it is very, very convenient that neither of them can tell their side of the story. So, again, this is something um, that I, I just wanted to get out there, get on the record while it's fresh on my mind. As I said, I, I just got back uh, home, back to my area of town here, and I just wanted to bust out the camera and tell you guys about this right away. I wish we could have gotten this, obviously. I mean, we were there, we were ready, um, but when I called her, I was expecting her to just buzz us in, and we were going to walk up, sit down, set up the cameras, do the interview. But right away, she was trying to figure out who we truly are, what we really want, and um, and there was people walking in and out of the lobby, so just to have some privacy w with her, I stepped outside, and I'm basically pacing back and forth in front of her apartment building, talking to her for a good half hour. I hope I'm not leaving anything out. It's that's why I wanted to do this vlog right now while it's all fresh on my mind, but um, again, spoke with her. This is what she told me. Um, she did get my contact info. Um, she, she, she did uh, want my phone number and she wrote down my phone number, so this might not be the end of this, I may still be able to get her on the record to indeed tell me what she just told me uh, about an hour or two ago in a private telephone conversation. And um, so again, this this isn't over, but this is information that I felt had to get out there. Obviously, normally I do my daily videos from Monday to Friday, but in light of uh, what just happened to me and within the last hour, I wanted to make sure to just Tell, tell you guys about it and just make sure that this information is out there that um, their aunt is 100% positively identifying the naked man who was arrested and placed in the back of the cruiser as her nephew the oldest one Tamarin so again this is still ongoing um, perhaps when she's uh, not not as, as distraught and maybe when she gets the chance to, to check out what we're about perhaps she'll want to call me back and it you know explain to me what what she told me today um, but on the record but again I, I just really felt that I, I needed to relay this information um, to the rest of the world and, and let you guys know um, that there's some deep FBI involvement in this case and we just simply cannot take what we're hearing from the mainstream media to be truth. So many misaccurate reportings, inconsistencies left, right and center. The the situation with these, these guys who were there before, during and after the bombing. Um, you've probably seen the photos and the videos by now. All these questions have gone unanswered and um, so that's, that's why we're going to continue to get to the bottom of this one folks and uh, I'll do my best to stay on top of this latest groundbreaking information which she just revealed to me which I am now trying to tell the rest of the world folks so again I'm gonna stay up I, I, I'm gonna keep up on this one and I'll uh, keep you up to date and this is ongoing um, so you know uh, w wish me luck I mean pray for me I, it, it was uh, a little nerve-wracking um, just having this conversation um, in front of her apartment when she's telling me this kind of groundbreaking information that has not yet been revealed to the world through any of the mainstream anyways guys that's all for me for today again I needed to get this off of my mind while it's still fresh on my mind I will keep you update uh, up to date with any further updates that come in and uh, other than that, folks, you can tune back into PressForTruth.tv tomorrow uh, or PressForTruth.ca, and uh, I'll, I'll be right back uh, reporting on this again tomorrow. And uh, anyways, guys, that's it. Just wanted to let you know what's up, and I'll see you all right back here tomorrow. Take care. We ran towards the scene. Uh, the police had, uh, from multitudes of agencies, all had their weapons drawn, pointing at a vehicle that we could not see from our vantage point. They were screaming for, the man, for somebody to put his hands up, to get out of the car at some point he did do that uh, 
because then we could tell that the, the officers were relaxing. We still couldn't see the, the car or the suspect. Then at some point, um, they brought him from his vehicle to a police car. He was completely naked. He'd been, uh, during the confrontation, I did hear him, and I believe you may be able to hear this on the tape we shot. Uh, he did, they did, they were ordering him to remove all his clothes, including his underwear. It was clear, it was clear. You, you, you heard the police officer say, remove all your clothes, yes. remove your skivvies. Exactly, right. exactly. So, um, that's when they brought him completely naked into uh, a was police car. Was he in handcuffs? He, I believe he was cuffed, yes. He was being escorted. Put in the car. So about 10 or 15 minutes ago, um, the FBI arrived. When they... When you said the FBI arrived, uh, yes. uh, what kind of vehicle and who came out of that vehicle? Uh, several FBI agents in, in various uh, states of either civilian clothes or tactical gear, wearing their blue FBI jackets. They came out, they um, went to the vehicle where the suspect was seated and uh, removed him from the vehicle at one point. Now, at this point, they'd gotten him dressed. He was still barefoot. He was wearing pants and a jacket, handcuffed from behind. They led him away from the vehicle towards a wall of a business they shined flashlights in his face and it looked like they were taking photographs i couldn't tell exactly what they were doing but it looked like they were taking photographs of his face once they completed that they walked him back to the vehicle and um started to question him extensively for about five to ten minutes then they put him back in the vehicle this is the individual cnn photojournalist who you had heard just a minute ago uh, shot this uh, in watertown this evening police handcuffed a man the man you see in this video getting into the police car he's believed believed to be associated with the shooting at mit and the subsequent chase through the streets of greater boston thursday night into the friday into friday morning local time the man was handcuffed here you see him again and walked naked to the police vehicle. At this time, I want to caution, CNN does not know what this man has been detained for. We do not know whether it is connected to the MIT shooting of the police officer uh, or anything else that has taken place in the Boston, Massachusetts area uh, this evening. Uh, but clearly he's of interest to local law enforcement. The FBI is trying to determine uh, if there is a relationship between what happened in MIT and is going on in Watertown this evening and what happened uh, here just a couple blocks away from me at the Boston Marathon on Monday. And uh, Drew, I, I know you're going to ask uh, uh, Gabe to explain a little bit further, but, but we understand he reported earlier, Gabe, uh, that that individual individual, the, the naked man in the police car, was taken out after he had been detained, and a photograph was taken of him. Uh, we assume, according to Juliet Kayam, a, a Homeland Security analyst we have at CNN, uh, that is to try to make a connection or see if there is a connection uh, between these individ this individual, and we understand there was a second arrest as well, uh, and uh, the individuals who earlier this evening, uh, Thursday night at, after 5 o'clock, images of them were released by the FBI individuals wanted uh, in relation uh, to uh, the Boston Marathon bombing.